Hello, hello, and good afternoon, and welcome to uh, the Digital Learning Lab Summer Series. We're so excited that you all have uh, joined us today. Um, my name is Stephen Stone, and I am the EdTech Training Coordinator for Cypress Fairbanks ISD. Uh, we want to let you know that uh, while you're in YouTube, uh, the chat is disabled, but don't fear, don't fret, because I know many of you want to ask, ask the presenters questions. And so if you would click on the description below, uh, there is a link that will take you to a form whereby you can enter your questions and they will answer your questions live. So today is a live presentation. But before we begin, I would also like to remind you Every Tuesday um, on our YouTube channel, we, we will be rebroadcasting uh, sessions that has um, happened in spring 2020. And so you can also join us on that. We have chosen uh, our best sessions ever. And so if you miss those sessions in the spring, you can also um, go live with us on Tuesdays. Now those sessions are pre-recorded, but if you have any questions, you can always feel free to email us at edtech at cfisd.net and someone will be able to answer your questions there. Without further ado, we would like to turn you over to your presenters. Ladies, are you ready? Yes, we yes. are. All right, you all can take it away. We have Shannon and Jamae. Way to go, ladies. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Hi, Ms. Johnson. Hi, Ms. Kilpatrick. Are you ready for summer? Yes, absolutely. I mm. am. It's hot Me outside, is... sunny. Yes, I'm at my favorite I'm... place right here at the beach. I'm going to come visit you in a minute. I'm just finishing snorkeling, so I hope that you'll be ready to have a conversation, but I'm so excited. The first day of summer is actually June 20th. Ooh, that's right. So this is perfect timing. <laughs> so one of the one of my favorite things to do whenever I'm at the beach is to read. So I love reading during the summer um, because there's no pressure. It's just reading for fun, and I, you know, enjoying um, some of my favorite authors. And so today, but the, here, let me just tell you though, Ms. Johnson, <laughs> one of the things that um, sometimes gets is difficult is that I can't I read I finish a book and then I want to read the next one or the next in the series and I don't have access to it and especially right now we can't get out and about as much as we you know could in the past and so one of those solutions is going online and finding the book as an ebook so that sounds Fair, awesome <laughs> my fair has a lot of resources that are free for students to access thousands of books online. And so that is what we're gonna share with everyone today. We have four different um, programs that we're gonna show students how to access and how to get to and some of the features within. So we are really excited to get started and show you that. I'm I am too, I got my bags ready. See you guys in a minute. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. So as I said, we're gonna be talking about books online and we're gonna show you four different things, four different types of books that you can see um, and access using your SciFair account information. So just a couple tips about Digital Learning Lab. If you are, or as you're watching, if you miss something or we talked about something too fast, because we are only gonna be here about 30, 40 minutes today. So it's gonna be a shorter session than we did in the spring. But if we are talking too fast, or it, you know, the great thing about this being on YouTube is that you can pause us, rewind us and watch it again. So anytime that you need to see that, definitely use those features. I'm gonna show you those in just a minute. There's also a picture in picture. So as we are showing you how to get to these resources, you can make us minimized in the corner while you're doing it along with us. And so that's a really great way to be able to do it side by side. And then as Mr. Stone mentioned, we do have that question form, which is down below. And you can just click on that and ask us any question and we will do our best to answer that while we're live here with you. So just to show you those features I just mentioned, um, all right, so we've got pause. Just move your little dial over here to rewind. 
and press play whenever you're ready to rewatch. Sometimes that helps with a lag too. So if it seems like we're kind of lagging behind, then you can do that and pause and rewind. Um, and then down below, we have that link for questions. So you just click that link to ask questions. And then for picture in picture, this one is one of my favorite. You'll right click and then right click again within the YouTube video, choose picture in picture. And then you can see that the video comes down to the corner. You can make it a little bit bigger so that you're able to see. And then you are able to go to a new tab and go to any of the sites that we tell you about today so that you can do that side by side with us. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of picture in picture just by Xing that right there. Okay, so how to access these books online. Um, we have a portal, which plenty, many of you have probably went to before, and it's your my.cfisd.net portal where you'll sign in. And we're gonna show you a quick video of, that, of those steps. This is about one minute long, and then we'll get in and show you where to access. Hang on one second. Let me share my sound. Okay. We'll show you the steps that students can follow to access their ELAR digital resources, as well as how to connect their Google account with their CFISD network credentials. When students log into a Chromebook with their Google username and password, this window will pop up within the browser. It's called the my.cfisd.net page or launchpad. To log in, they'll use their network credentials, which is the letter S, followed by their student ID, and then their password. The password is the same password that they use to log in to a Chromebook with their Google. So they type in this username and then their password and click sign in. This will now launch the launch pad. They'll also be reminded here to change their password if they have not done so for the year yet. If they have changed their password already, then they can just click close. Okay. So that's just how to get you started getting logged in. Exit out of here. This video will show you the steps. My little ex is hiding from me. Oh. <laughs> okay. There we go. I'll do that. Okay. So once you are in to my.cfisd.net and signed in, then you're going to go to Literacy Pro. And the icon looks just like this. Look at all of these awesome books that you can access. It nice. has over 2,000 books, and they just keep adding more and more. And there's nonfiction, fiction, there's something for everybody. So when you are signed in to your MyCFISD account, it will look just like this. You'll click over here to additional resources, and then you'll select Scholastic Literacy Pro. So that's the first one we're gonna show you. The second one, just so you know where to go in a little bit, is electronic, is HMH reading. And that is located in electronic textbook providers. So you'll go to here and then you would click HMH Ed Student. So those are the first two that we're gonna show you. Then we're gonna talk about some other resources and we'll show you how to get to those in just a moment. So once you're signed in, additional resources, we're gonna go to Scholastic Literacy Pro. When you open it, it's going to bring you in to your account. Oh, didn't like that. Hang on, I'm gonna log back in. I was signed in ahead of time to save time, but now I get to sign in again, that's okay. The first time you sign in, if you've never been in Literacy Pro before, the first time you sign in, it's going to prompt you to do a um, inventory. It'll ask you about the types of books that you like, um, different topics that you're interested in, and you'll be setting some goals for reading as well. And your teachers are connected to your Literacy Pro account, and so they can see what you're reading throughout the summer as well. 
All right, perfect, here we go. So right whenever, after you finish that inventory, or if you've logged in before, the first page it brings you to is the Explore page. The Explore page shows books that you've interacted with recently, right at the top, and then down below some other books that you may be interested in based on books that you've looked at before or what you've filled out on that survey. So all of those are right here, easy for you to access. And then you have your My Books section, which I'm gonna to go to in just a moment. But what I'd like to do is click on search. So when you click on search, you can type in a title, you can type in an author that you're looking for. You could even click one of these interests just to look for books about those interests. I'm just gonna do a blank search because I wanna show you all the different things that you can search with. So I'm just gonna click the magnifying glass. And then right here where it says filter, click that drop down. And now I can look for books on a certain reading level. So maybe I am an older sibling and I want to read a book to my uh, younger brother or sister or cousin or I'm babysitting or anything like that. So you could look for a book that would be on their reading level as well. Um, if you go to genre, you can look for all fiction books, nonfiction, any of these types of genre as well as interest. So you can look at books based on interest. So if you really like animals, you can click animals and pets, and then all of those animals and pets books will be filtered for you. A um, another, yes, another thing that you may wanna do is make sure that this is on eBooks only. So these are gonna be books that you can read in Literacy Pro. So we're gonna go ahead and pick one of these. There's a fish one. I know Ms. Johnson, you were asking about that earlier. Yeah, um, so exciting. if I go into this book about fish, I'm just gonna click right here for read it now. It opens up the book and I can start reading. So these arrows will toggle over page by page. Okay, my table of contents. And then as I'm reading, something is fishy, a colorful angelfish. Oh, I'm not sure. What is an angelfish? I can click it. Oh, angelfish. Dictionary, but maybe minnow. Minnow. Small freshwater fish, it tells me, often used as bait. So if there's ever a word that I'm not sure of, I have to just click to finish that word. Most of the words are in the dictionary, but as you can see, not all of them are. Then I can highlight certain things. So maybe there's something I really want to remember or like angelfish wasn't in there. I'm curious about that. I want to read more about it. So maybe I'll highlight mm. that. Or I can add a note as well. So I can click and, and type a note and say, look up angelfish later. So it's a note for myself to make sure that I look that up because I want to learn more about it. So then I can click save. So all of my notes and everything are saved. I can go right over here to contents, notes and highlights, and I can see the notes and the highlights that I've added to that book. Um, you can also zoom in, you can zoom out if you want it to be you know, a little bit bigger. You may be watching or looking at this on a different type of device. So if you're on a phone or a tablet, you may want to zoom in or zoom out. So reading through the book, this book does not have the audio feature, although there are some books that do. So I'm going to close out of this one. Notice that this book has a little check mark here, okay? And these books have a plus sign. So as I look through some of these books, if I think I might be interested in them, I'm going to want to click that plus sign. And then those books are going to be added onto my bookshelf. So when I go to my books, now those books are all added in here. So it's a quick and easy way to get those books added. And then um, there's my fish book right up there so that you can get, get back to them quickly and find them. You don't have to do that search every time. So I wanna look for a book that has audio. So I'm gonna click with audio. This book right here has audio. This just happens to be one of the books that I have that is in my bookshelf. There are a lot more books that have audio. There's just happens to only be one that's on my bookshelf right now. So when I do read it now and go into this book, the audio option is up at the top. So you can see you have this read to me. So I'm gonna go through to one of the pages that actually has things for it to read. 
Here we go. And click play. Chapter 1, Seas of Grass. Wide open land stretches as far as the eye can see. So sometimes it may just be a little section that you want to hear read, and then you want to read on your own. So the audio and read to me is really useful, and it sounds like a real person, not like a computer. Okay, so a couple more things about Literacy Pro. I'm watching my time here. And I'm just going to close out really quickly. So we looked at search. And then I mentioned something about your goals. So when you go to profile, this is where you're going to see the goals that you set. You can update those goals. Okay. And when you finish reading a book, you want to make sure that you add that book to your reading log so that you get your minutes increased as well as your number of completed books. So anytime you're reading a book and you have finished it, you click log time. And then you come over here, I finished this book, and then you can write a review, rate the book, write it, give an opinion of the book. And then this will be shared with your class and your teachers. And then she can share that with other, she or he can share that with other students as well. So you enter that information, click save. I can put in here that I read it for a certain number of minutes. I didn't read this long enough. That's why it's not letting me, but you can do that as well. All right. So Literacy Pro, pretty cool. What do you think, Ms. Johnson? I absolutely love it. I just like all the notations you can do and, and even the, the definitions, it even reads it to them. There's that little audio button that you could actually hear said to you. So that's very yes. helpful. Yes, it's awesome. So a lot of great books. And even if there's a book that's not on there that you've searched for, you can, if you have that paper book, you can search for a book and still add it to your reading log and, and up your reading minutes and your lit bit points too. So just an FYI, you can add books that aren't in the program as books that you're reading. All right. So the next one we're going to go to is called HMH Ed. And again, there's a very big variety of books that are in here too. And you get there by going to that electronic textbooks and clicking on this icon, HMH Ed Student. So when you click on it, it brings you right into this page. This is called the Discover page. I'm gonna show you two things in here. There's a lot more, but I only have time to show you two just to get you started. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is the Student Choice Library. So when you click on this, notice this, I'm looking at this for a third grader right now. So it should have your grade up here at the top. And so all of the books that you see will be books that are at your grade. So I'm gonna click on Student Choice Library. And then you can see these books are right here. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna choose this, all the places to love, open. Oh, that looks And so nice. if I open this book up, I have some of those same options that I had in Literacy Pro. I have the highlight option, I have note taking, um, also can play audio as well. So as I go through, just clicking these arrows, just like we did before, okay, I get right here to this, and I can click play on. On the day I was born, my grandmother wrapped right. me in a blanket. And then made notice from the it wasn't highlighting the text. So if I want to do that, I just click these arrows or click these three dots for more and do read along, highlight on. So now it highlights those words she as it reads along. Okay. She held me up in um, the you open can window. Also add notes. So I can I can select text choose a highlight color and add a note. Just typing in my note right here. Okay. Nice. All right, so the second thing I'm gonna show you, so this opened in a separate tab. So to get back to my Discover, I just click the tab right here. And I'm gonna go back to the main page um, there are other books located within the My Book as well as the Rigby Level Library. But what I want to show you real quick is the modules right here. We have Fourth of July coming up. Oh, yeah. And so if you want to learn a little bit about um, some American history and Fourth of July, then you can click right here to go into module three. And it brings you through start to finish. So there's, there's going to be poems in here. There's also 
some different questions and cure and get curious videos. So it gives you some information um, about historic places in our nation in this case, and or about that topic. So then there will be some vocabulary. But as you keep going, you'll see that there are different books and articles about that topic. So there are short reads as well as longer books too. Mm -hmm. So that module has everything that is kind of about that topic. So if you're a history buff and you like learning about those things, then that would be a good module to check out. Okay. So those are the two things I wanted to show you from HMH. Um, again, just explore. Don't be afraid to click on things and check out all the books that you have access to. Wow. Right. That's Ms. Johnson is going to show you how to get to two more things that are located within, also within my CFISD. Um, one that she's gonna show you is how to get to your library resources. So you do have access right here. This is one way that you can do it. You click library resources, click destiny library, and it brings you right to your school library. So it's just a quick way for you to get to all of the things that your librarian has added for you to access. All right. Great job. Okay, Miss Kilpatrick, I'm on my way. I have All right. I have my paperback and I have my my other electronic reader. Ooh, so I yes, I have mine excited. too. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to talk about two more of the different uh, ways to actually access some of the books out there. I'm so excited because we can't make it to Barnes and Noble right now, but we could definitely get some really great resources right here in Fair. So just like Ms. Kilpatrick was sharing with you, you can go through my.cfisd.net and access the district library resources, but you could also go to the cfisd.net page and on our landing page where it says parents and students. If you click on that and over to the left, you can scroll all the way down and you can click library resources there as well. So once it comes up, you'll see that it will display another button that says find your campus library. And we know that you know what school you're attending. So we have all the elementaries and the middle schools and even the high schools. I'm just gonna click on one of the elementary schools and we'll just go into their library and, and you notice that when Ms. Kilpatrick opened hers up from my.cfisd and now I'm opening it up from CFISD, you can see that it looks the same. Uh, most of the librarians and media specialists has all, all of their icons on here, but remember we're only gonna showcase a couple of reading apps for you to start for the summer and there's plenty. The one that I'm gonna click on is Tumble Books. I don't know if you heard of Tumble Books. Have you heard of Tumble Books, Ms. Kilpatrick? I have, and Ms. Johnson, I just checked our question form and I just wanted to mention that it, it looks like a couple students don't have access to Literacy Pro right now. And um, that may be because it didn't get turned on before the end of the school year for their class. But um, I'm so glad that we're sharing some other resources because there are a lot of really great books in these as well. So make sure whenever you get to school this, this fall, you um, ask your teacher about getting Literacy Pro turned on for you. All right. Absolutely. I love all on. the Tumble Books is awesome too. I learned so yes. much just by exploring this with you. <laughs> okay, so once you're in the Tumble, Tumble Book library, you can see all these tabs are different things that you can actually explore. I'm just going to click on a couple so that you could kind of get the idea of what you could expect. And if you click on storybooks, once it loads up, it's so awesome because it, it'll display some of the new books, the award-winning books, some simple alpha book reading, and then early reader. So it really drills down to the type reader that you may be. So I really like that one. I'm gonna go to the next tab where it says read-alongs. And read-alongs are nice for us because sometimes I'm like trying to enjoy this beautiful weather and I can't put my eyes on it because the sun's so strong. So I might wanna have it read to me. So I'd get my earbuds out. So here are some of the different ones. You have the early readers, you have the chapter books, and I'm just gonna click on an early reader so that you can see how, what it looks like. So once I click on the book and I go to read online, you can see down at the bottom is my navigation bar so that I can choose some different things while I am reading the book. 
So for example, the text option, like it may be kind of small. So I'm gonna actually click on the text option and you can see I can increase the size of the text. So I'm just gonna click here. And then also I could space it out too. So this is great for readers that have a hard time reading and needs this accessibility right here. So it's perfect for you to do that. And you can also change the font if the font isn't really good, you know, that you can read with your eyes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the one that was there and I'm gonna close it. Did you see how the words enlarge? So yes, I think that that's great really because when I'm reading on a digital text, I always need um, to kind of change that font a little bit or the color because my eyes get tired. Yeah, and, th and that, that's a good segue into what you just said. You can also click down at the bottom where it says color options. You can change the background color. So if you need that contrast, and you need the uh, back to be dark and then the words to be light, you can do that. So you can actually change the color of the background and also the color of the font. So I really love that feature. I'm just gonna kind of go back. So then when I play this, you can see what's going on. And another cool feature right next to the color option is my notes. So I'm reading along and I decide, oh, you know, I wanna remember that. Or, you know, or maybe you just want to write some notes down about one of the characters and you want to do a character trait. So you're saying that Kate is a very sweet and helpful person. So you can actually add notes, click on there and you can save it. So then when you come back to it, you can re reference that later. So it's kind of nice because I know that if I bring my little highlighter on the beach, oh my goodness, it might, <laughs> it might, I might not be able to do it or I'll lose it or something or there's sand everywhere. So yes. that's a cool way to actually read this book. So once it's read, it will, and, and it does track the reading. So <laughs> that's perfect. So that is a definitely another way that you can um, read the books. And I'm going to make sure I get through this. So the read alongs, and then we have our eBooks that are here that we shared before. The other one that I really, really like and see that you you can see that it's even by authors and so forth. But the graphic novels, how many of you like to read comic books? I know I did back in the day, but I'll probably age myself if I do. So Miss Kilpatrick, what were the books that you really enjoyed reading? Oh, um, like comics and graphic novels. So they didn't have a lot of options like they do now. I really wish that they had. Um, so there are so many great graphic novels out there now, but I used to love to read the comics that came in the newspaper every week. <laughs> so kind of similar, only your story is even longer. So it doesn't just end after, you know, five, um, window or I can't even think of the name of it right it's now. The you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, each of the cells, you're right. Yeah. It's not just a strip, it's a whole book. Which is great. Yeah, I stripped the whole book. So if I were just to click on this, this is what it would look like to the end user. You would click here and you go read online. So when you're reading this one, this particular one with the graphic novel, you tend to want to go left to right. And these arrows right here is just for the chapters at the top. So if you just want to skip over to the chapters, you would just use the left and right arrows at the top. But if you really want to read the comic book in, online, you would just simply scroll down instead of left to right. And then here you will see your little speech bubbles and you can read your comic book right there. So I love being able to um, actually see some of their graphic novels out there. Look at the illustrations, they're pretty awesome. So yeah. if you'd like to read some of those books, that's an option. So that would be under the graphic novel. And then there's some great nonfiction books. So if you really want to know about things that are really happening out there and that are true, you might want to look at some of the nonfiction. The video tab, I also love this because it's true too as well. The National Geographic has all these videos for us. Oh my goodness, this is so nice. So we really have a nice video storage of all the cool videos that, that Tumble Book has. Um, I'm going to share this one tab right here, right next to it. It's called the Language Learning. And I don't know if you've explored this, but what I love, love about this is that it has Spanish and French. So if you're a Spanish reader or you're trying to learn Spanish, grab some of those books and also the French books. So that was a nice piece that it had on there as well. And then there's a playlist of some other books that you can also read. And what's on the playlist is that if you wanna read a quick book, 
you can just read the quick book if you want to do it for under 10 minutes and you want a quick read you can just choose those books that are just designated for that time frame so that's a great way and then last but not least in tumble books are the puzzles and games so if you want to take a break from reading you can go and do the puzzle and games so i really really like that feature what do you think about the tumble books library is there so many to choose from miss kilpatrick there really is a lot to choose from. And, um, you know, I did, we did get a question about somebody asking them for a login to Tumble Books. And so it's possible if you didn't go through your campus library link that it may ask for a login. And if it does, I know that there's like a standard that our schools use. Um, it's summertime. I don't want to just share it out right here <laughs> yeah. in the <laughs> to everyone, but um, your librarian has that information, your teachers, your school principal. Um, and so if you're not able to get into the tumble books, try going through the library link. And if that doesn't work, um, then maybe see if you could reach out to um, someone at your school and they can provide that to you. That's great. That was that was some good information. And yes, um, we're gonna go ahead and talk about one more. Yes. And it's Sora. This one is awesome. Have you heard of Sora, Ms. Kilpatrick? I have, I have I read books on Sora. Oh, there's so great. many different options. <laughs> well, I'm gonna sh sh uh, share this quick little video so that you- Hi, kind of my name is Olivia. I'm gonna go ahead and- And I love to read. Finding something new to read used to be a problem until the Sora app. I can use Sora to discover and enjoy the industry's largest collection of ebooks and audiobooks from my school for both leisure and class assigned reading, and it couldn't be easier to use. Just find your school and log in using school credentials. From there, it's a simple one tap step to borrow and start reading. With Sora, you can listen to audiobooks and add bookmarks, notes, and highlights as you listen. With ebooks, there's the dyslexic font, enlarged text, read alongs, and more to personalize my learning. And Sora provides a unified experience across the devices and operating systems. This means you can sync loans, holds, highlights, and more on all your devices. With Sora, achievements and avatars make reading fun for students, and teachers can optimize instruction with title assignments and reading data. It's even easy enough for my dad to use. Sora, the student reading app, brought to you by your school and built with love by Overdrive. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this. And this is kind of the same process that Ms. Kilpatrick talked about. If we go through my.cfisd.net and sign in. So when I click in here, I will be able to go to the additional resources and I should be able to see the Sora app right here. And that's what you may have to do. And just like maybe the library went to, right, Ms. Ms. Kilpatrick, if they could go ahead and log in with their credentials. Yes, I, I'm. while you're continuing to do that, I'm testing it out on the side just to see if it works that way. So okay, perfect. Before we that's sign perfect. out today. Okay, when you do get launched into the Sora app, it may ask you about that class link that kind of flashed up and went away. Just go ahead and load that extension on there because that's how you would be able to access the actual app inside of your um, My Learning. So if you look at this page, this is a landing page. I have no assignments. We're just talking about reading. It's summer, right? And so mm -hmm. it looks like I have three books on loan. So that means I checked out three books right now. So that's pretty cool because we noticed that we could check out no more than three, but if we check one back in, then we could go back and check out another one. So that's okay because some of the books, you know, I can't read a lot of books at a lot of, you know, at a given time. So this will be a nice way to kind of keep track of that. But if you look at the bottom, there's some menu buttons down here. If you go to the one right here where it says explore, if you click on that, and then you come to this page and up at the top left, it says search for books. If I click on that magnifying glass and go to add advanced search, this will help you drill down on which kind of books you might like. You can, if you know the title of the book or the author, you know, the library number, that'd be awesome. And then the different formats that we were talking about, um, whether or not they're audio or eBooks, of course, the subjects, the different type books that are based on, you know, your 
part of your interest and then language. This was kind of interesting because I was telling Ms. Kilpatrick, I go, oh, pretty much I'm pretty dominant in English and I know very un poquito in Espanol. Mm -hmm. So but this is really cool. I actually clicked on Chinese. I, I mean, I know we don't have a lot of time, but they have Chinese books out there. Oh That's my awesome. goodness, I was so excited. So you may want to explore that. So if we have all the different languages out there, yay for you guys that they have some of these books in Sora, guys. So then you go to the audience and then the, the reading levels. And then of course the interest level is really important because we want to make sure that you get the appropriate books for your reading level. Do you want to, you might want to make sure you select your um, interest level, of course, and then of course, then if you want to know what books are available or ones that are pre-released or even some read-alongs, and then of course you hit the, the search button. So that's how you could do a quick search instead of going through all the other things that are available in there, okay? So I am going to also show you a quick example of, remember I was saying that on my homepage, it shows the three books that I have. So I have Dumbo and if I click Dumbo, I'd have to click open the book and it's gonna launch the book. And, and if I click it again, it opens it up and then down at the bottom, it will start the narration. So it will start reading. Dumbo, written by Calliope Glass, illustrated by Dominic Carolla and Ryan Feldman. Oh, did you hear that? fast. <laughs> Holy cow, we need to change that. So if I click back on the book, you see how I'm clicking in the middle of the book? So it's kind of collapsing and then it's enlarging. So up at the top, if I click these three lines, this is, this is cute, and I click narration, I need to slow that down because I might be a speed talker, but I need to maybe do it a little slower. So I'm going to see now if that's a little better. That is, yes, that sounds better so far. <laughs> Once upon a time, a ragged little circus rolled into a ragged little town. Okay. The so circus. Let me click back. And then also where you see the three lines, you can bookmark pages. You can choose the reading settings, kind of like a lot of the books that we were just talking about today. So you could have the contrast if you're dyslexic or if you need to make your text larger. This is where you would do that. So it really accommodates for all those type learners and readers out there because we all see things differently. And as I get older, I need my text a lot larger. So that is really a, a, a neat feature for, for uh, Sora in that regard. So once we are in there and I go back to my homepage, maybe I've already read the Lorax. So I want to get another book, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to click on the book and then where it says return, I click on return and then hit return. And so now that, now itself, and guess what? I will be able to access any other books that are out here. So like we said, there are so many books. There's a plethora of books. It's just like going to a virtual library and you're looking for all these books. So we've given you four great resources to kind of get started with. And we, we know that you guys are readers out there. Read for fun, read for pleasure, and enjoy your summer with all these reading choices. Uh, Ms. Kilpatrick, did I miss anything? Do you want, would you like to add to that? Because I know that we we're you know, running out of time, but we want you to get a taste of reading because I'm so excited. I have my book and I want to read. Yes, I know. I think that you covered everything about those. I mean, perfectly. It, definitely get in, get started. If you can't access one of the things that we showed you, it's okay. That's why we wanted to show you more than one. So go into one of those other ones. And, um, and so, you know, we're excited to read along with you and find some great books um, throughout the summer and enjoy. I'm going to go have a seat on that uh, lounge chair back there and get started on my reading. <laughs> okay, I'll come and join you. So if you're here next week, it's going to be another exciting week for you because you're going to be a master of Google Slides. So if you think you know what Google Slides are, maybe you don't. You might want to tune in on that. I think I'm going to come with my 
my electronic book. What do you think, Ms. Kirkpatrick? Yes, they're gonna, I, I've seen a little bit of what they're gonna do next week and they're really digging deep in and showing some cool stuff. So I hope that y'all can join us. I remember like Mr. Stone too, said too, on Tuesdays, we're rebroadcasting the some of the sessions from the spring. So if you didn't see those in the spring, definitely check us out on Tuesdays as well. So okay. we're so glad that you all joined us today. Okay, have a great summer. We'll see you back next Thursday. May not be us, but enjoy <laughs> enjoy your day. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>